got another set of questions for the alkanes and haloalkanes topic and as always the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try them first. Okay so make a start so which alkane has the highest boiling point well they're all C7H16 so they're all structural isomers being a bit awkward with the way they've presented the formula so it's structural formula which is probably the least friendly so what we'll do is just have a quick look at their um, skeletal formula. So there they are there and hopefully you can now see that it's going to be A because this doesn't have any branching. So these molecules can get very, very close together, have a high degree of surface contact. So they've got the strongest in the molecular forces. So the answer is A. Moving on to the next question. So which shows a propagation step in the mechanism for the reaction between butane and chlorine? Well, it's definitely not A because that's an initiation reaction. It's definitely not B because that is a termination reaction. So that leaves us with C and D and these equations have a sort of similar sort of feel to them because they are both molecule radical, molecule radical. But the one that fits this mechanism is D. So the thing I always tell my students to remember is in any sort of halogenation um, mechanism, the halogen radical, so chlorine in this case, will always strip out hydrogen from the molecule and give the hydrogen halide, so HCl in this case. So the answer is D. Moving on to the first of the sort of longer questions, and you can see it's asking us about the mechanism we've just talked about. So the initiation reaction equation looks like that. So chlorine is broken by the UV, which is a condition. I'll write that up in a second. So Cl2 is broken by the UV into two chlorine radicals. Moving on to the propagation steps. So I'll just remind you of what I've just said. So obviously we're starting with butane, we've got that chlorine radical, so this is going to take one of those H's to form an HCl molecule. So I always get the students to write that first, so they don't forget about it, and what's left over is a radical, so it's C4H9. And then the second propagation step, you take the radical that's just formed, react it with a chlorine molecule, and you're going to get C4H9Cl and a chlorine radical. Moving on to the next part, so the sort of mantra that I have for, for this is every substitution requires a mole of halogen and every substitution also makes a mole of hydrogen halide. So because all 10 hydrogens are coming out, we're going to need 10 moles of chlorine. So we get C4Cl10 and we're going to make 10 moles of HCl. And the last part of this question, so organic compound E is formed by the substitution of some of the hydrogen atoms in butane by chlorine. So we've got the mass of compound E, and we know its volume in centimetres cubed, but because this has not been done at sort of RTP, we can't use the 24 dm cubed molar gas volume. We've got a different molar gas volume for the temperature that this has been carried out at. So Moles equals volume over the molar gas volume. But remember, it's been changed from 24 to that, which comes out at 0.0024 moles of E. Well, we know the mass of E, so we can work out its MR. So mass over moles gets us 265. Now, we know there's four carbons in this, so if we take out 48 for that, it gets us to 217. And then if we divide that by 35.5, so we can see how many chlorines are in this thing, gets us 6.11 dot dot dot, I haven't bothered with the whole calculator value, but basically that's telling us that there are six chlorines in E. So remember we started with C4H10, so we must have four hydrogens. And then if you want to check, you can work out the MR of that, and it is actually the correct MR265. Moving on to the next question, so we've got to do this mechanism for the reaction between one iodopentane and aqueous sodium hydroxide. It's obviously the hydroxide ion that's going to attack this carbon here. Slightly positive carbon, slightly negative iodine, so we need to show that dipole there. And we're just going to take a curly arrow from the lone pair to that carbon, which in turn will repel the pair of electrons in the CI bond completely onto the I and break this bond by heterolytic fission. So we show that with a curly arrow like that, and we'll just draw up the products. 
So we get this alcohol here, and don't forget the I minus, which is what that would become. Next part of the question, so what measurement and observation would allow the student to compare the rates of hydrolysis? So remember, in this reaction, um, a halide ion is produced, so it will be an iodide ion in the case of one iodopentane. It will be a bromide ion in the case of one bromopentane. So if you've got aqueous silver nitrate and ethanol there, it will detect the silver ions, it will react with the X minus ions and form a precipitate. So to compare the relative rates of hydrolysis, you'd measure the time taken for the precipitate to form. And the next part is all down to the relative bond strength of the carbon halogen bond. So CI bond is weaker than the CBR bond, or you could say it has a lower bond enthalpy, and therefore the CI bond will break more easily than the CBR bond. Part B, so what information is given by the peak labelled X, so this is the peak furthest to the right, it's known as the molecular ion peak and it gives you the MR of the molecule, we could say the molecular mass. And to help with the next part, I've drawn up the structural formula for the molecular ion peak before it fragments. So we need to come up with the structural formula for the ions responsible for the peaks labelled Y and Z. So if we start with Y, that's got an M over Z value of 71. So that's due to this ion here. So the fragmentation has happened there. So the iodine and the carbon have basically that bond's been broken by the electron gun in the mass spectrometer, but that would cause that peak there. What's caused the peak at Z? So that's got an M over Z of 43. So that's due to this ion here. Obviously the fragmentation has happened between these two carbons. Structure of 2-iodo-2-methylbutane. So we need a main chain of 4 for the butane part. Carbon number two has got the iodine on and a methyl group. So that's the answer there. And the last part of the question, one similarity and one difference between the mass spectra of one iodopentane and this thing here. Well, the similarity is going to be they'll have the same molecular ion peak at M over Z198. The difference is going to be down to the fact that the two iodo-2-methylbutane can't produce that fragment peak at M over Z 43 because it doesn't contain a C3H7 um, aspect to it, a structural aspect to it. So you can break that there and produce that fragment, but there's no way to produce that fragment with this.